Hello everyone. I'm Masaki Kimura from Hitachi Plantara. I'm going to talk about in-use protection for Kubernetes resources, PV, PVC, Secret, and beyond. Okay, let's get started. First, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Masaki Kimura. My GitHub handle is mkimuram. I'm an OSS developer in Hitachi Plantara. I have been contributing to Kubernetes community for more than three years. I'm one of the main developers to make Roblox Boring feature and CSI feature stable. I'm recently working on implementing enhancement for communication between Kubernetes cluster and outside cluster, and proposing resource protection for Kubernetes resources. And this session is about protection for Kubernetes resources. This is the agenda for this presentation. I will first talk about existing protection features in Kubernetes, and then explain new protection features that I'm currently proposing. I will show you some demos and FAQ, and finally conclude this presentation. Let me start with existing protection features. The first existing feature is RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control. It is a feature to control who can access to which resources and how. There are three resources that define who, user, group, and service account. And there are two resources that define which resources and how, role and cluster role. The difference between role and cluster role are whether it is for specific namespace or not. Role is for specific namespace, and cluster role is for all the namespace in the cluster. Role binding and cluster role binding in the middle are used to connect the concept of who and which resources and how. For example, the role binding shows that user Alice can update or get config maps, my config maps, in the default namespace. And the cluster role binding shows that EP monitor controller can get, list, or watch services, endpoints, and ports in all the namespace. If written down, they go like this. What do they mean when thinking about this feature from the resource protection viewpoint? Alba can restrict who can run a secretary to only specific users. For example, Alice can't run a three delete. However, RBAC cannot prevent granted users from deleting resources erroneously. For example, if another user, Bob, has deletion right, he can erroneously delete. The second existing feature is finalizer. It is a feature to block resource deletion to complete. The phrase block resource deletion to complete may sound a bit redundant. However, it will be important later in this presentation. So please remember this redundant phrase. Let me explain the behaviors for both without finalizer and with finalizer one by one. As for without finalizer, for example, if a config map, my config map, has empty finalizer field, it is deleted 
immediately on the deletion request. So if you execute kubectl delete config map my config map, the config map is deleted immediately and no one has time to process any operation before the deletion. On the other hand, with finalizer, for example, if the config map has some strings in finalizer's field, on the same deletion request, deletion timestamp is set. Completion of deletion is blocked until finalizer field become empty. Once the finalizer field become empty, the resource is deleted. So the key difference is the time before the deletion. There are two purposes of using the time before deletion. Hook point for actual deletion and to delay deletion. The first one is for controllers to delete actual resources before deleting the resource. For example, it is used to delete an actual volume managed by PV, or it is used to delete actual resources managed by CRDs. The second one is for controllers or users to wait for dependent resources to be deleted. For example, PVC protection, PB protection, and garbage collector use finalizer for this purpose. I will explain details on these features in the next slide. Also, it can be used to block deletion of a specific resource. So you can manually add finalizer to a resource if you think that it is important for you. Let me explain PVC protection and PV protection. PVC protection is a feature to block deletion of PVC while used by part. And PV protection is a feature to block deletion of PV while used by PVC. If you are not familiar with the Kubernetes storage model, this explanation may not be enough. So let me add some explanation on it. In Kubernetes storage model, storage is managed through the concept of PV or persistent volume and PVC or persistent volume claim. PV is a reference to the actual backend storage and PVC is a reference to the PV. Part consumes the storage through PVC, therefore, it makes problem if PVC is deleted while part is using the PVC, or if PV is deleted while PVC is using the PV. That's why PVC protection and PV protection is needed. As for the implementation, of these features, it is very simple. For PVC protection, there is PVC protection controller and it adds fi finalizer on PVC creation. And when deletion timestamps becomes non-near as a result of deletion request to the PVC, it checks whether PVC is used by any ports and there is a finalizer if not used. PV protection works almost the same way. Next feature is garbage corrector. Garbage corrector is a feature to delete descendant resources on ancestor resource deletion. So it is a feature to delete not a feature to protect from deletion. To manage multiple pods, Kubernetes has concepts of deployment, 
and replica set. Deployment manages a replica set, and the replica set manages multiple pods. In this way, users can create and manage multiple pods via deployment, instead of creating multiple pods manually. On deletion, users don't need to delete pods one by one. They just need to delete the deployment and all the managed resources are automatically deleted. To achieve it, garbage collector is needed. To manage the relationships, garbage collector uses owner references field in each resource. The field has identities for the parent resources. For example, a pod has a reference to its parent replica set, and a replica set has a reference to its parent deployment resource. Then, the basic behavior of garbage collector is it updates a graph structure of owner reference on every create, update, or delete event for all resources. And it deletes referenced resources when all references resources are deleted. For example, it deletes replica sets on deployment deletion, and it deletes pods on replica set deletion. Then, finalizer plays a role to achieve additional feature to guarantee order of deletion. For example, it is used to block deletion of replica set to complete until all pods are deleted. If block owner duration is true and foreground cascade duration is specified, finalizer is added to parent resource and the completion of the duration of parent resource is blocked until all its parent resources are deleted. Next topic is new protection features. Before going further, there is a caution. Slides hereafter contain features that are still under discussion in the Kubernetes community. Therefore, specification and implementation are subject to change. The features might not be implemented in the worst case scenario. As you heard the explanation for the previous slides, you may think that Kubernetes already have enough features for protection. However, this slide is to show that it is not enough yet. It became clear by the issue in this slide. The issue was a failure in deleting a volume with Azure File Driver, and it is found out to be a non-driver specific. Let me explain the issue first. As explained, to consume a volume, pod, PVC, and PV are created in Kubernetes storage model. Actually, to create the actual background volume and delete it, PV uses provisional secret, and the secret can be in the same namespace. In such a situation, what happens if the entire namespace was deleted? On the namespace deletion, Kubernetes has a namespace lifecycle controller that deletes all the resources in the namespace. Therefore, all the resources in the namespace are requested 
to be deleted. As explained, PVC and PV have a mechanism that prevent deletion while they are in use, but secret doesn't have such a feature. So the secret is highly likely to be deleted before PV is deleted. Then, PV deletion will fail because deletion of the backend storage fails due to the lack of provision secret. Therefore, secret also needs protection. I started proposing secret protection. Note that secrets that were different from CSIPVs can be configured as parameters in storage class. For example, by writing pvc.namespace in storage class, you can specify the provisional secret namespace to be the same namespace as the pvc. It is used to make the secret per namespace or per pvc not to be shared across the cluster. So you might be able to avoid putting secret to a different namespace to avoid this issue, but it will conflict with this use case. Also, even if you put the secret to different namespace, there will still be a risk to be deleted mistakenly. This slide explains the first proposal of secret protection. As you might guess, the word first proposal means that it will be changed later. Secret protection is a feature to block duration of a secret while it is used. It is proposed as a similar implementation to PV and PVC protection. A secret can be used from pod, PV, or volume snapshot content. So, the newly introduced secret protection controller adds a finalizer on the secret creation. And when the original timestamp becomes non-near, it checks whether the secret is used by any resources, and it deletes the finalizer if it is not used. Feedbacks from community is Unconditionally adding finalism may affect existing environment because there are other use cases of secret. Also, there are many differences, like pod, PV, and volume snapshot content, so aren't there are any features to block duration of resource X while resource Y exists. So, I studied considering a generic protection feature or in-use protection. In-use protection is a feature to block duration of resource while it is used. It is for all kinds of resources, not just a specific resource like secret. And it is used by other consuming controllers like secret protection controller. As for the implementation, I proposed similar implementation to garbage collector. But again, as the slide title shows, it is the first proposal. So it is changed later. The basic idea is that if you remove the duration logic for garbage collector, 
the remaining logic for guarantee of the duration order is exactly what we want for in-use protection. So, a newly introduced UZ references field is added in metadata and it is used to track the reverse reference of using resources. The basic behavior of controller side is it updates a graph structure of UZ reference on every create, update, or delete event for all resources. And it adds the finalizer when number of referencing resources becomes one or more. And it deletes the finalizer when number of referencing resources becomes zero. And usage from consumer side is on creating resource, it adds a reference to the reference resource to the referencing resource UZ reference field. For example, on creating persistent volume that uses a secret, it adds a reference to the secret to the PV's UZ reference field. Feedback from community is it's too complex to update inverted graph structure of all resources for this use case. Updating all resources means that we need to update which resources to watch when new CRDs are registered. So it is a very complex work that garbage collector is doing. Also, managing inverted graph means that we need to keep track of all the changes. Failure in tracking changes means that they will be inconsistent. Also, finalizer blocks duration to complete, but it doesn't block the duration to start. It actually says that finalizer has an issue when it is used for protection. And this becomes the biggest issue. So let's go back to the finalizer slide and see what this issue is. This is the modified version of finalizer slide. As explained, finalizer is a feature to block resource deletion to complete. And the issue was that it doesn't blocks the duration to start. This issue happens when multiple finalizers exist, and the purpose of the finalizer are both hook point for actual duration and to delay duration. If multiple finalizers exist, order of duration for each finalizer is undefined. So, deletion of actual resource starts even if finalizer for delay deletion remains. So, it may be inadequate for blocking deletion. The idea for solving this issue is shared from Kubernetes community. The concept of VM that it discussed in old issue long ago will be a real solution for this issue. So, let me share the summary of the idea. The basic idea is to protect from erroneous deletions. Deletion requests should be blocked because it is too late to block the deletion after the deletion starts. To block request, validating webhook can be used. The validating webhook is a mechanism to check the request if it is valid and block the request if it is invalid. 
to decide whether to block, a slice of string should be used as it is done in finalizer. It is to allow multiple entities to set and unset the resource to be protected. As for the name of the concept, the word BN might not be familiar to non-native speaker of English like me. From the American Heritage Dictionary, BN is defined as the right to hold another's property as security for a dead old. And the difference between finalizer and rein is that finalizer blocks deletion of a request to complete. And rein is block a deletion request of a resource. With the concept of rein, in-use protection becomes a feature to block deletion request of resource while it is used. A newly introduced Lien's field is added to metadata as a slice of string. The basic behavior of controller is that it blocks a deletion request for a resource if the Lien's field for the resource is not empty. For example, the deletion request for the Secret in the example is blocked by in use protection controller because Rien's field isn't empty. As for the usage from consumer side, it adds a Rien to a referenced resource on creation of a referencing resource. For example, it adds a rein to a secret on creation of persistent volume that uses a secret. As a result of discussions, it is decided not to add identities of referencing resources in Rien's field because the field may become too big by adding such information. For example, if we add identity of using resource like persistent volume my volume to reens and the secret is used by hundreds or thousands of PVs the reens field becomes too big so each controllers need to track referencing resources With this version of in-use protection, secret protection becomes a feature to block deletion request of secret while it is used. The basic behavior of the secret protection controller is that it updates a graph structure on every create, update, or delete event for pod, pv, or vsc. It adds a rein when number of references resources becomes more than or equal to one. And it deletes the rein when number of referencing resources becomes zero. Secret protection controller only adds reins to secret when it needs to be protected. Then the in-use protection controller does all the rest of works to block the deletion. All right, let's turn to demo. The demo mainly consists of two parts. First one is the behavior of in-use protection itself. And the second one is the behavior of secret protection. The second one has two parts, protecting a secret while used by pod and 
protecting a secret while used by a persistent body. The first demo is about in-use protection. Let's manually add reins and see how it works. Any kind of resource works in the same way, but let's use secret here. I created the secret and there is no reins field. So we can remove this secret. Okay, so let's repeat the same command again and add reins and see how it works. Created a secret and there is no reins. Okay, so let's manually add reins by patching the secret. If we get the secret again, you can see Rien's field is added. And let's try to delete this secret. Then the deletion request is blocked by in-use protection controller. And let's remove the reunions and check that we can delete the secret again. It still have reunions, so let's pass the secret to remove the reunions. Then there is no reunions anymore. So we should be able to delete this secret now. And we can delete the secret. Next demo is about secret protection. Secret protection is implemented as an external controller, so we need to deploy the secret protection controller first. I deploy the artwork and then controller. So the controller should be running in curve system namespace now. So let's check it. Here you can see that secret protection controller is running. So let's create the secret and annotate the secret to opt in the feature. Then you can see that the secret with this annotation. Just adding annotation doesn't block the deletion of the secret. So the secret can be deleted. Okay, let's so let's repeat the steps to create the secret and annotate it. To make secret protection controller to add reins to this secret, we need to deploy a pod that consumes this secret. In the official Kubernetes website, there is an example pod YAML that uses the secret. So let's use it to deploy the pod. And check that the pod is actually using the secret. And you can see that the secret is mounted on the pod and the test secret is used by the pod. So the secret protection controller confirms that the secret is used by the pod, so the reins 
are added by the secret protection controller. So we should not be able to delete the secret now. Yes, it is blocked by the in-use protection controller. There are two ways to remove the regions. The first one is to remove the annotation to opt out the protection feature. So let's try it first. It still has regions and annotations. And once we remove the region, oh, sorry, once we remove the annotation, then the regions are also deleted by the secret protection controller. So let's re-add the annotation and confirm that the region is added by the secret protection controller again. And the second way to remove the region is to delete the consuming pod. So let's delete the pod and check that the regions on the secret is removed too. Yes, now we still have annotation, but the reins are deleted. So now we can delete the secret now. The last demo is the case the secret is used by PV. Let's create a secret with the annotation. To make PV use the secret, we need to prepare a stretch class that is configured to use a specific secret. In the stretch class, it is configured to use the test secret in PVC's namespace. Then let's create PV by creating PVC. We can see that the PVC and the PV for the PVC is created. And the PV is using the test secret. Then the secret protection controller should see that the secret is used and the reins is added. So we can't trace the secret now. Then let's delete the PV by deleting the PVC. Now you can see that the PVC and PV is no longer exist and the regions is removed and we can delete the secret. That's it. Then, let me share the answers to the question that I think that would be frequently asked. The first question is if there are any workarounds before Rien is available. And the answer is that please decide the best workaround depending on your requirements. If you can wait for Rien to be available, please use Rien after it becomes available. Please note that this feature is still under discussion and won't become stable until Kubernetes 
If you can't wait, next question is, does start of duration matter? If no, you can still use finalizer instead. And even if yes, you can still implement your own admission webhook to block duration by yourself for both finalizer case and admission webhook case, you may need to consider re-implementing with Rian after this feature becomes available. So you will need to decide with re-implementing cost in mind. The second question is whether there are any other use cases for Rian other than secret protection. The answer is that I'm interested in applying this feature to only allow duration via parent resource. The background of this issue is that some operators cause issues when child resources managed by CRDs are directly deleted by users instead of deleted from the operators from the parent resource. These issues happen due to the lack of the duration order guarantee. To solve this problem, we can use this feature to disallow directly deleting child resources by adding reins when duration timestamp of all parent resources are not empty. Owner references field can be used to track the relationship that the child resource is still used by the parent resource. To conclude, existing and new features to protect Kubernetes resources from error solution are explained. As for existing features, RBAC can restrict who can delete. However, granted user can still erroneously delete. Finalizer can block deletion to complete. However, actual deletion may start. PV protection, PVC protection, and garbage corrector use finalizer to block deletion. As for new features, Rian blocks deletion request itself. Rian can be used not only by controllers like secret protection, but also by users manually. The feature is still under discussion and can be used in Kubernetes 1.23. I'm targeting alpha in Kubernetes 1.24. As for workaround, until new features can be used, you can use finalizer if start of duration doesn't matter, or you can implement admission webhook if start of duration matters and can't wait reends to be available. Thank you very much for your attention.